Welcome everyone to the Phoenix Report. I'm Jack Connor. Um, as all of you know, uh, you know, as of the as of right now, as I record this, it is October 21st, 2015, which of course is Back to the Future Day. Um, you know, of course, the significance of that in Back to the Future Part Two. This is the day that Doc Brown and Marty McFly and Jennifer. Uh, travel into the future, and obviously the uh, the future depicted in the 1989 film is a lot different than the one we live in now. Um, you know that movie came out in 1989, <laughs> so uh, you know some of the things they got, you know, they predicted right. Some of the things not so much. You know, we don't have flying cars, <laughs> we don't have hoverboards, but uh, and we certainly don't dress the way they do in that movie. But um, you know, it's uh. You know, it, it, it's pretty incredible that that movie series still resonates with people today, and it's still enjoyed by young kids today. It's ironically, it stood the test of time. You know, no pun intended. Um, for this reaction piece, I could sit here and talk about, um, you know, sort of the things that everyone's talking about about you know what they got right, you know, as far as like what they predicted and what they uh, what they didn't have right as far as uh, what their version of the future, which is now our present, was like. Um, I, I'd actually rather talk about something a little more personal. And that is what Back to the Future means to me. Um, specifically Back to the Future 2, which is sort of, you know, got this whole thing started in the first place. Um, <clears throat> I, you know, the Back to the Future 2 came out in 1989, and I was only five years old at the time so i you know i wasn't going to see it in the theaters but years later i know that my cousin rick had um he had back to the future 2 and 3 uh on video vhs at the time so really i kind of discovered it from going to going to his house you know my aunt and uncle's house and um of course he and his sister my cousin monica they would show me and my me and my sister um, that movie, <clears throat> it just, something about it just captured my imagination immediately, as I'm sure it did with millions of other kids. Um, not only was it a way for me to bond with my cousins, but it kind of introduced me to the, uh, concept of time travel. Um, I had never, you know, known anything like that before. I was so young. I, I hadn't really heard any kind of story like that. Um, Something about it just clicked with me um, as a young kid, um, seeing what the future would be like and seeing the possibility of new technology. And, you know, I thought the hoverboard was the coolest thing in the world. I absolutely wanted one so badly. I, uh, I really wish that they were real. Um, I still wish that they were real. Um <laughs> You know, it, it's it's one of those things. It just there's something about it, um, something about it kind of got me interested in things like science fiction and technology and stuff like that. And obviously, I'm no scientist, but you know, looking back, I can only imagine the amount of kids who felt the same way I did, and who were inspired to develop new technology and and to you know, create things and think of new things. And really, I think that is, uh, is very important because it inspires, um, change for the better. And I think that's what good science fiction and good storytelling should do. Um, I look at things like Star Trek, which I, I, I'm not, I wouldn't not as, you know, necessarily a huge Trekkie, but, you know, I look at um, depictions of what our future could possibly be. And, um, the idea that, that as, as, as we grow older, that as humans grow older, that, that we could have a more positive future, um, and that technology could bring about change for the better, I think is a great thing. I think it inspires people. Uh, I think, I think it gives people hope. I think it inspires them to want to do better and to make positive changes in the world. And that's not, and I know that sounds base, you know, looking at, 
you know, looking at entertainment and escapism, which it is that obviously it's, it's great entertainment. And, um, I mean, there was just, there's just so many things about it that I loved as a child. I loved, um, I loved the character of Marty McFly. I thought he was just one of the coolest characters, you know, because he had that guy next door, you identified with him. Like, you know, he was the kind of guy I wanted to be when I was in high school. He was, um, you know, he wasn't necessarily the biggest kid, but he was brave and he stood up for what was right. He stood up against bullying and he stood up for those who couldn't stand up for themselves. Like in the first movie, when he went back and met his dad as a, uh, as a young kid and he, you know, he kind of stood up and had his dad's back. And I, I mean, there was just so many great things about that character and about this franchise. And I think that's why it still resonates with kids today. I mean, yes, it's dated, obviously. it's That's the whole point of it. Um, you know, but I mean, things like that, like the concept of being a teenager and looking at your parents when they were young and empathizing with them and seeing what they went through. It was, it's just, you know, those kind of stories, they never get old. And I think people will always be able to identify with that in some way. And, um... And, and the second movie in particular, Going to the Future. And I think, you know, something about, you know, seeing what what they thought our future was going to be. And, you know, even though we're not necessarily there yet, um, it was it was beautiful. Because there's a lot of negativity in the world today. And I think it's easy to look at you know, today, what 2015 is and, you know, be and lament it because, you know, yes, there is, there are a lot of things wrong in the world today. And, you know, it's always been that. And, um, and, and there are, you know, there is a lot of evil in the world, unfortunately. I mean, that's, that's a fact of life, but, but I think as long as there are as long as there are stories out there like Back to the Future 2, I think that's going to continue to inspire young people um, to make a better tomorrow. And I know that that may sound cheesy, that may sound a little bit corny, but I think there is something to that. Um, you look at um, other stories of dystopian futures like the, the Terminator series or even like George Orwell's 1984 Um I haven't read that, I'll admit, but I know that it talks about a future that, you know, isn't bleak. And I think that's something, I mean, obviously that serves a purpose too, because it lets us know what not to do. Um, uh, even, uh, even other movies like, uh, like Idiocracy, which came out in 2006, which is a comedy. And, uh, you know, and if you haven't seen that, that movie is about, you know, what happens if, you know, stupid people keep breeding and smart people stop uh, having kids. And it's it's a really funny movie, a really uh, poignant satire, I guess, on, uh, you know, commercialism and all that. And I don't want to get on a soapbox about that. But um, I think in a r- very real way, Back to the Future 2 um, inspired me to dream um, to dream of a better tomorrow when I was a kid and to be interested in technology and to, and and to, you know, want things to, to be better and to have, and to develop my imagination. And that, and that isn't something I take lightly. You know, there was a, there was a viral video going around of Christopher Lloyd as Doc Brown saying, saying that, yeah, 2015, you know, maybe it didn't turn out the way that they thought it would uh, in the movie. He kind of hinted at that, sort of breaking the fourth wall. It's as if he was, it's as if he was talking to you, to the viewer. And um, he sort of echoed um, some of the lines from the movie, saying that the future isn't written, that the future is whatever you make it. So make it a good one. And I think... The key to doing that beyond, you know, technology and beyond being smarter or, you know, more clever or whatever the case may be is how we treat each other. 
meaning how we treat our fellow man. If we, <clears throat> you know, if we treat each other with compassion and with empathy and try to help each other out instead of tearing each other down, which um, some may argue that technology has caused us to be more removed from each other. I don't know if that's true. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> sometimes it's hard to argue, but you know, I think that it, you know, if anything can come out of this, I, th I, I, I would like to think that there are more good people in this world than the, than there are bad. And maybe that sounds naive, but I think, you know, the, the best way to, to have a good future, to write our own future, to make it the best we can be is, um, just to treat each other well and, you know, to not, you know, to not be so selfish, you know, to maybe think of others instead of thinking about ourselves all the time. You know, not that it's bad to think about yourself and to treat yourself good, but you know, we're all in this together. So, um, so let's make a good future for every one of us. That's, that's what I hope the big takeaway from, uh, from back to the future day is, you know, more than just celebrating an, an iconic movie, more than um, more than celebrating, you know, the laughs and the and and the the fun and the adventure and all that. I mean, all that is great, but you know, let's. Um, I hope that that message isn't lost on people. So, just some food for thought. Hope you guys had a great Back to the Future day, and um, you know, and thanks for tuning in. So, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Jack X Connor. Like me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Jack Connor Music. And feel, free to ch and feel free to check out my band at www.vertebreaker.net. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, make sure you email me at jackconnorpodcast at gmail.com or tweet me with the hashtag Phoenix Report. And if you're listening to this on YouTube or iTunes, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, and go back and listen to all the other episodes. Thank you for listening. This has been the Phoenix Report with Jack Connor on the twobadbrains.com.